This is a 1987 Chevy Blazer, and it's an old school SUV. In fact, it's an SUV from the days before anybody called it an SUV. This was a four-wheeler, and it certainly wasn't used by moms to transport children or dads to drive to soccer practice. Today, I'm going to review this 1987 Blazer and show you all the quirks and features of an SUV from the past. Before I get started, big news, this Chevy Blazer is currently for sale, being auctioned live on cars and bids. This has a cool two-tone paint job, four-wheel drive, a manual transmission, and a big V8, and it could be yours. So, once you finish watching this video, click the link in the description to head over to Cars and Bids for the live auction for this Blazer, where you can bid on it and buy it only on Cars and Bids. All right, time for the quirks and features of the Blazer, and I want to start by showing you just how different this is from a modern SUV. Even though it's only 25 years old, they're still using the Blazer name, doesn't seem that long ago, it is a totally different vehicle from what you think of as an SUV today. And probably the best way to illustrate that is opening the tailgate. In your modern crossover, you walk up to the back of the car, press a button, and the tailgate beeps a couple times and then automatically opens. In this, the process is a little more challenging. There is no exterior handle to open the tailgate. Looks like there's one, this chrome piece here, but that is in fact not a handle. Instead, you pull it out and it becomes a giant lever that you use to roll down the rear window, manually turn after turn after turn, and then the rear <laughs> window is down. Now, at that point, you have access to the cargo area because the back window is down, but if you have something heavy and you don't want to lift it quite that high, there's still another step. For that, you have to reach inside the tailgate. There's a latch in here. You pull on it, oh, and then you can let down the tailgate. And by the way, it is tremendously heavy. Like, oh, a very, very, very heavy piece. Good luck opening this if you're a child or if you're elderly or if you have a grocery bag in one arm. And of course, to close up everything, guess what? You gotta go through it all again. You put your stuff in the back, then you, oh, Oh, lift that massive piece and then roll up the back window again manually. <laughs> And then once it's done, you snap the lever back into place and you're good. A far cry from a button and an automatic tailgate. And of course, there is far more to distinguish this from a modern crossover. Another fantastic example is how you activate the four-wheel drive system. In your Toyota RAV4, you're driving along in two-wheel drive until the system detects that you're slipping on ice or mud or whatever, and then sensors activate and the system instantly springs the rear wheels to life in order to give you more traction. Not the case here. If you want to go into four-wheel drive in your Blazer, you actually have to get out of the car and manually lock the front hubs. It locks them to the drivetrain, and you have to do this on both sides, driver and passenger in the front, because it's rear wheel drive until you do that. Once you have gotten out, locked the front hubs manually, and then gotten back in, you can shift into four wheel drive, and then you're actually in four wheel drive. Not exactly the most convenient thing if it's the middle of a snowstorm or you're stuck in the mud, you gotta go get dirty, cold, whatever, just to put your car in four-wheel drive, but that's how it was. And there's more distinctions between this old-school Blazer and modern SUVs and crossovers. A big one is the fact that when this generation of Blazer came out, the body stopped at the top of the windshield. That was the end of the body. You can see here an earlier Blazer with just the windshield, and that was it. Of course, these were sold with a roof, but it was a giant removable panel that went from the top
top of the windshield all the way through to the back of the car. The problem was there were leaking issues because the top wasn't actually part of the vehicle itself. And so for the 1976 model year, a major change was made to the Blazer, wherein the front part got a cab, an actual roof integrated into the body of the vehicle. Worth pointing out, it was still only over the front seats. You can see this scene here is where the actual vehicle body and the still removable top meet, but the removable part was only over the back seats, and now it wasn't leaking over the front seat occupants. That's not something you get in your regular Honda CRV, an update in the middle of the model cycle to add a roof. And by the way, yes, the rear panel is still removable, even in this Blazer model, but it's quite a job. It's a massive piece, as you can see, with windows in it, and it's absolutely huge. It's a multi-person job to get it off there, but you can remove it if you want open-air Blazer motoring. And next up, we climb inside, where you'll find still more considerable differences from today's SUVs and crossovers, starting with the transmission. This has a manual transmission, which is already a pretty big difference, but here, it's a four-speed manual. And actually, it's even crazier than that because the first forward gear is actually a low gear that you'd probably use in off-roading situations if you're stuck or trying to tow something. So there's really only three speeds that you're gonna be used driving around town. A three-speed manual and an SUV, it is a far cry from today's 10-speed automatics. And then there's the rest of the stuff in here. Like, for example, you have two giant gauges in the gauge cluster, but even though this has a manual transmission, neither of them is a tachometer. You have a speedometer, as you can see over on one side. The other giant gauge is a fuel gauge, a massive fuel gauge. <laughs> Doesn't really make sense why it's so big, but it is. And speaking of things that don't make sense why they're so big, how about the warning lights, which are over off to the left, and they too are huge. <laughs> see, instead of a little indication like you have in your gauge cluster, there's a massive bright bulb staring at you in case one of these things has gone wrong. Seems like a little overkill. And next up, another old school feature of the old school blazer. You look up and you see no headliner, just painted metal. <laughs> You don't have some nice Alcantara or even cloth piece up here, just painted metal. And in terms of other stuff they left off, how about a center console? <laughs> it seems like at least that would have made it into this car, but it didn't. No storage area in here. No armrest even to rest your arm on a long drive. You don't even get cup holders, which I suspect people buying this would have wanted. Now, there is a cutout in the dashboard, as you can see here, which you're thinking, well, maybe that's a cup holder, but no. It's an ashtray, because you gotta think about the era when this vehicle came out. They prioritized ashtray over cup holder or even armrest. Now, with all that said, one big advantage this old school Blazer has over modern vehicles is this cool swiveling front window. I love these windows. You open it up, it provides significant airflow into the interior. Automakers have completely ditched them, and it is so sad because these were so fantastic. You could get such a nice breeze with this windows, but modern cars don't have them. Speaking of cool down in this blazer, worth pointing out, it has air conditioning from the factory. That was a nice touch, and it would have been a pretty luxurious feeling thing in an SUV from this era to have factory AC. And speaking of the center control stack area, directly below that AC, you can see an old school radio, except it isn't actually old school. This is a modern Bluetooth stereo that looks like an old school radio, so it fits perfectly within the dashboard of the feel of this car. But actually, you can hook up a Bluetooth device to it and play your music from Spotify or whatever, and that is a really cool idea. I love to see these old school radios fitting into the style of the car, but bringing you more modern tech. And next up, we move on to the back of the old school Blazer, the back seat, which, as you can imagine, oh is pretty sparse. There's not a lot going on back here. In fact, you can clearly see it's basically just a bench with some seat belts and that's it. There's no climate vents, there's no climate controls, the windows don't roll down back here, there's no screens, there's no storage pockets, there's no cup holders, there's no panoramic sunroof, there's no rear touch screen mounted on the back of the front seats. There's a bench and there's seat belts. You sat back there and you liked it. Worth pointing out, there is one nice luxury in back, ashtrays on both 
sides, of course. <laughs> they don't have cup holders, but they have ashtrays. It's also kind of funny to see ashtrays in there considering the rear windows don't roll down, like I said. So you'd be smoking in kind of an enclosed compartment in the back. But if you had to smoke, you had to smoke in the 80s in the back of a blazer. And of course, children would sit back here in this era and they didn't have any devices to look at or screens or charge ports. They simply sat back here and didn't complain until they got in an accident because there's no headrest or head support at all and their necks would probably go flying. Safety wasn't a major priority in this era. It was just pretty Spartan. Now, one other cool thing that I like inside this old school blazer is this badge over on the passenger side that says Custom Deluxe. The badging was always cool and the naming that they used, like Custom Deluxe, made you feel like you were buying something kind of special. And in terms of badging, the cool badging continues on the outside. We have this big blocky badge that I think really adds character to these old school blazers. Now, there was a period where these badges weren't all that stylish and people removed them. They called it a shaved look with no badges. But these days, enthusiasts buying these trucks love these badges because they're really representative of this Blazer and its area. You got K5 on top, that was like the model code, then Blazer and giant print, and then this little design, which I never understood. Is that a sun? Is it a seashell? Regardless, why is it there? But it is, and that was kind of a little Blazer touch. And next up we move under the hood where you'll find another big change compared to modern crossovers and SUVs. A big change compared to modern vehicles in general and that would be a big V8. This is a 5 liter V8 and it is old school. It's fuel injected but... <laughs> It only makes 170 horsepower, and it does that while probably getting something like 9 miles per gallon. So you don't get good performance and you don't get good fuel economy. It's kind of the worst of all worlds, but that's how SUVs and trucks were back then with these big old inefficient V8s. And this Blazer is no different. It's part of the charm of an old school SUV. And also up front, another throwback to the old school era, this massive vertical grill. Modern cars have these sloping front end designs to make pedestrian impacts less severe. Not this thing. It is a vertical grill, a 90 degree right angle with the hood, and to top it all off there is a huge chrome metal bumper in front. There was no diminishing the severity of an impact with a pedestrian if you had an old school blazer. Now, this grill design is kind of an icon in the old Chevy truck world. The blazer used it, obviously. The pickup trucks used it. The Suburban used it. This old square grill was very famous for Chevy Chevys from this period. And on the Blazer, that meant 1973 to 1991. That's how long this generation of Blazer was sold for almost 20 years before it was finally redesigned. And then eventually it became the Tahoe when families started buying SUVs and they realized people wanted four doors. Now, there was also a GMC version of this Blazer that was called the Jimmy. And interestingly, Jimmy was a nickname for GM, General Motors. If you said it fast, it was like GM, Jim, Jimmy. They did this because the supposed story of how the Jeep name came to be is similar. Jeeps were used in the military as general purpose vehicles, or GP, which was shortened to Jeep. And so GM figured GM, Jim, Jimmy, and that's how they got the name for that vehicle. And by the way, speaking of military, there was also a military application of this Blazer. You can see it here. It was massive, it was no frills, and it was powered by a diesel engine. These were mainly used for like troop transport around military bases, that sort of thing. Not really forward combat like an armored Humvee, but they were around this Blazer as a military vehicle. Now, one other interesting thing in the history of this Blazer, there was also a smaller model, also called the Blazer, that had nothing to do with this one. It was called the S10 Blazer. This was the K5 Blazer, but if you didn't know those model designations, you just knew that GM was selling two different Blazer models that were completely different. And this happened for a long time, all throughout the 80s and early 90s. Eventually, this Blazer Blazer was canceled, became the Tahoe, and the other Blazer lived on for a lot longer, and now it's back in the form of a little crossover that has revived the Blazer name. All right, driving the K5 Blazer. And before I do, thank you to Garage Collective here in San Diego for letting me use their space to film. Garage Collective is like a cool car membership organization uh, with cool events and also car storage. And you can also check out Garage Collective in the link below. Thank you again to Garage Collective for the space. Base. I have reviewed on my channel a old school Bronco, a 96 Bronco, and a Dodge Ram Charger. 
but never a big full-size blazer. So here we go. All right, so first thing about this vehicle, and one of the coolest things, one of the reasons it's so popular, the seating position is just wonderful. You're above everybody, you're above everything. You're just feeling cool. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here, there's a Hyundai Tucson in front of me, sort of standard modern crossover, and you're just like a tower. You're so far above him. <laughs> And that's kind of cool. Now, one thing that's immediately obvious the moment you get in this car, like I've been saying, everything else is so different and old school compared to modern vehicles. Boy, is that true with regards to the way it feels inside. It is an old truck. I mean, this generation of Blazer came out in 73. So this is an 87 and they went through 91, but it came out in 73. So you got to figure this design is basically late 60s, early 70s stuff and it feels like it. It is a lot of metal. It's a lot of creaks and rattles in here. Not as bad as I thought, but still, it's not like a modern car. And you have this incredibly loud engine. I'm going 45 miles an hour, and it's it's gotta be turning three, 4,000 RPM, and I'm in top gear, which is, of course, third. Uh, it does not feel like a highway cruiser. It does not feel like a modern, comfortable, smooth car. That's not what this was for. Like in the 80s, in the 70s, people didn't buy them to do like long highway trips like people do now with SUVs. It just wasn't a thing. People bought these for like true four wheel drive use. The military had them, police departments had them, people who lived up in mountain cabins had them. That was pretty much it. It wasn't like today where every other person has an SUV. Now, I don't want to make you think that it's uncomfortable. That's not really the goal here. It isn't uncomfortable. It's actually nice in here. You got a lot of space. Again, like I said, you're sitting up high and it's pretty drivable. It's really no issue. I mean, you put this point the steering wheel, it goes. Obviously, it's slow to steer, slow to respond. There's a lot of body roll. All those things are no exact surprise considering it's a full-size Blazer. I think everybody would have guessed. The issue is more like acceleration is atrocious and the car just feels like a big, burly, hulking thing. It's not like the kind of thing you could possibly throw around. It doesn't feel like a car you would drive in the suburbs because back in this era, it's just not what you did with SUVs. Now, one thing I will say, it is damn cool. <laughs> like this is just a cool vehicle. And you even get that sense when you're inside it and driving it. Like I'm reviewing the driving experience as if it's like something that you're considering buying and like driving. But truthfully, for most people, it's gonna be like a second, third, fourth car. Like it's something that they wanna just kind of have some fun with. And it is that, it lets you have fun. I mean, it feels like an old school charming vehicle. And I love that. And I think that's what people are loving about these. These old Blazers, these old Broncos have all started to become desirable and surprisingly valuable. And I think a good chunk of the reason is it just puts a smile on your face. This is not an experience that a modern car has. Yes, it's creaky and rattly and loud, but that's kind of part of the enjoyment of it. The thing about this old school Blazer and old school SUVs in general, you know, I have a 97 Defender. It's not that much different from this. It doesn't feel quite as big, but it's the same kind of creaky, rattly, big V8 with no power kind of thing. And it's, it's just that they're cool. They're just cool to drive around. You feel like you're going back in time and it just feels so different from any modern rational vehicle. But parts are cheap and it's kind of fun and it's just a, a, a cool life experience. And that's why these are hot right now. And you get the two-tone paint and this like old school charm that you just can't really get anymore. And so that's the 1987 Chevy K5 Blazer. This is an interesting vehicle and it certainly doesn't put the sport in sport utility vehicle. It feels like it's from a totally different era, but that's because it is, and that's the charm of an old school SUV. And it can be yours on cars and bids. Anyway, now it's time to give the K5 Blazer a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 38 out of 100, which puts it directly between the 1996 Ford Bronco I reviewed and the 1993 Dodge Ram Charger. Truthfully, these three vehicles are all pretty similar. The Bronco feels a bit newer than the Blazer, but it's not a huge difference compared to modern cars. All three of these old school SUVs are massive, bulky, ridiculously inefficient, and ponderous to drive on the road. And they're all very cool and quickly gaining value and enthusiast interest.